7.30 p.m. across India, live from New Delhi, you're watching DD India Global. We'll get you the top stories from India and the region. I'm Shubhin Dukhosh and for news from the rest of the world, I'm joined by my colleague Caroline Manon in Washington, D.C. Caroline, how are you? Good morning, Shubhendu. Well, it's 10 a.m. here in Washington, D.C. and 3 in the afternoon across Central Europe. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, we have more on cleanup efforts from the Baltimore Bridge collapse. But first, the headlines. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu agrees to send delegation to Egypt and Qatar for Gaza talks. Negotiators try to secure release of Israeli hostages as part of truce deal. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with Bill Gates discusses AI, digital public infrastructure and climate change. Tropical cyclone Gamane kills 18 people in the island of Madagascar, displaces thousands more. And Good Friday observed across the world, carrying wooden crosses and singing hymns, Christians hold procession in the old city of Jerusalem. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has agreed to send delegations to Egypt and Qatar where negotiators have been trying to secure the release of Israeli hostages as part of a possible Gaza ceasefire deal. Israeli Prime Minister's office said he spoke with the heads of Israeli intelligence agencies and approved the proposal with a mandate to push forward with negotiations. An international court of justice has ordered Israel to provide immediate unhindered delivery of aid to Gaza. Judges as the ICJ unanimously said this could be done by increasing the capacity and number of land crossing points and maintaining them open for as long as necessary. In January, the court, also known as the World Court, ordered Israel to refrain from any acts that could fall under the Genocide Convention. Israel, meanwhile, has called the allegations that it is blocking aid wholly unfounded. Giving its response to the court order, Israeli Foreign Ministry said it was continuing to promote new initiatives and expand existing ones to allow a continuous flow of aid into Gaza by land, air and sea. Working with the UN and others, it said that Hamas was to blame for the situation in Gaza and for starting the conflict. Meanwhile, Israeli Defense Forces continued their strikes on Hamas targets in Gaza on Friday. IDF conducted airstrikes on Lebanon, killed a deputy commander of Hezbollah's rocket and missiles unit, reportedly responsible for conducting and planning attacks against Israel. According to the military, he was one of the Iranian-backed militias leader. DD India correspondent Alex Kadia gets us more from Tel Aviv. Israel has been uh, particularly critical of South Africa for bringing uh, this case uh, in the first place. They called it a cynical attempt to exploit the ICJ to undermine Israel's right to defend itself after the atrocious attacks of October 7th. But to the, to the point made by the ICJ about humanitarian aid, uh, the uh, uh, lawyers for Israel at the ICJ said denied any uh, deliberate uh, human suffering caused by Israeli forces. We've also had a statement from the, uh, the Foreign Affairs Ministry here in Israel saying that Israel will, will places no limitations on humanitarian aid that enters the Gaza Strip and wishes no harm to civilians and that they will continue to promote new ways of getting aid into the Gaza Strip and expand the existing ways alongside charities and UN agencies. They also said that Hamas is to blame for the humanitarian situation on the ground because according to the Israeli Foreign Ministry, Hamas started this war with the attacks on October 7th. Uh, certainly a, a strong reaction 
a full denial by Israel that any uh, limitations are being placed on humanitarian aid uh, despite that uh, new order by the ICJ. We will then have to wait now a month, 30 days, uh, for Israel to report back to the court to see if anything changes on the ground. And amidst food shortages in Gaza, a Jordanian charity is preparing, delivering traditional Middle Eastern ready-made meals to Gaza. The organization aims to provide up to 50,000 meals a day during the holy month of Ramadan. In recent months, it has provided meals to people in Gaza, delivering via airdrops and trucks. The initiative is in collaboration with the Jordanian Armed Forces and Jordan Hashmai Charity Organization. Let's now turn to the updates on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Caroline Malone is in Washington, D.C., gives us more on this and other stories making headlines around the world. Caroline, what's the latest? Well, Russia on Thursday claimed to have destroyed Ukrainian tanks, including a U.S.-made tank, as well as equipment and facilities. At least one person was killed in an attack on Russia's Belgorod city, Meanwhile, Ukraine claims missile and drone attacks hit thermal and hydropower plants in its central and western regions. It added that it had repelled multiple Russian offences and launched strikes on Russian facilities. Polish and Allied aircraft were activated on Friday after Russia launched missile strikes on Ukraine. The strikes were witness in Dnipro and even Frankovich, both of which are in the south southeastern part of Ukraine, bordering Poland. And a Russian cruise missile entered Polish airspace for 39 seconds during a major missile and drone attack against Ukraine on March 24th. The Polish military said that it did not shoot down the plane because doing so would pose a risk to local civilians. Well, the U.S. is continuously trying to stem the flow of technology to Russia for weapons. In its newest bid, U.S. companies are being asked to stop shipping goods to 600 foreign parties over fears that the items could be diverted to Russia for use in Ukraine. The U.S. Department of Commerce sent letters in recent weeks to at least 20 companies with the warnings. Russia has vetoed the renewal of a United Nations panel of experts monitoring North Korea's compliance with international sanctions. Russia's move follows accusations from the United States, South Korea and others that Pyongyang is supplying Moscow with weapons to use in its conflict in Ukraine. South Korea termed Russia's decision as irresponsible, while the U.S. State Department called it reckless and one that undermined international peace and security. The United States is deeply disappointed by Russia's veto of the United Nations Security Council's 1718 Committee Panel of Experts Mandate Renewal. We are also disappointed that the People's Republic of China decided to abstain after 14 years of supporting this important mandate. For the past 15 years, the 1718 Committee Panel of Experts has been the gold standard for providing fact-based, independent analysis and recommendations on the implementation of UN sanctions on the DPRK. Well, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said Russia's veto against North Korea sanctions monitors is in Russia's interest. Russia's decision to veto and block the mandate of the UN Security Council of Experts who monitor the enforcement of sanctions against North Korea. Does this mean that the Russian policy in enforcing these sanctions has changed? Such a position is more in line with our interest. The talk was about a group of experts. The issue is that we do not agree with the practical aspects of this project. Well, for more, DD India's Dasha Chernyshova sent us this report from Moscow. 
Russia vetoed the UN Security Council resolution that sought to extend the monitoring of UN sanctions against North Korea over its nuclear program. Moscow says its veto comes as all the approaches to solving the problem on the Korean Peninsula have yielded no results and will not improve the security situation in the region. Russian Foreign Ministry's spokeswoman Maria Zaharova said in the absence of mechanisms that revise the UN Security Council's sanctions and ease them, the only hindrance confidence building and political dialogue. Zaharova pointed out that the group of experts of the UN Security Council's 1718 committee has, in her words, lost all the standards of objectivity and impartiality. She said that's why Moscow insists on establishing specific conditions for sanctions in order to review them and to make further decisions. Moscow's decision has been criticized by the Western countries that claim that Moscow is seeking to avoid scrutiny and allegedly violates those sanctions by buying weapons from Pyongyang. Moscow dismisses those accusations. The vote will have no impact on the actual sanctions against North Korea, which will remain in force. Dasha Chironshova in Moscow reporting for DD India. Well, on to the United States now, and the largest crane on the eastern seaboard is on its way to Baltimore to facilitate crews in removing the wreckage of a collapsed highway bridge that has killed at least six people. Maryland governor said the crane can lift up to a thousand tons and will be one of at least two used to clear the channel and twisted metal and concrete debris from the Francis Scott Key Bridge and the cargo ship that hit it on Tuesday. Well, in Haiti, more than 1,500 people have been killed so far this year as gang violence continues. The country has extended a state of emergency while trying to deal with the civil unrest and set up a new government. Didi India's Latin America correspondent Mary Trini Mena has more details. The United Nations has described the situation in Haiti as cataclysmic with more than 1,500 people killed in the Caribbean country since the beginning of 2024. The UN's High Commissioner for Human Rights, Walter Turk, said on Thursday that all these practices are outrageous and must stop at once. The most recent UN report says some 4,500 people died last year. Since February this year, Haiti has been facing a political and security crisis as rival gangs battle for control. Criminal organizations have attacked strategic locations such as the international airport and police stations and blocked main roads, preventing the distribution of food and essentials across the capital port of Prince. For now, a state of emergency that began a month ago has been extended until early April, but is likely to continue as the capital continues to be controlled by heavily armed civilians. This comes as the Caribbean nation is working to establish a new government through a transitional presidential council. Even though Haiti's prime minister said in mid-March he would hand over his office when the transitional government takes office, the council is not officially installed yet. In Caracas, Marita Nimena, reporting for DD India. Well, foreign departures from Haiti have picked up recently as the country's political future hangs in limbo. Canada sent a helicopter to its embassy in Port-au-Prince on Thursday to evacuate Canadians who want to leave. Canada is initially facilitating travel for vulnerable citizens, such as those who need medical attention or those with children. Around 30 Canadians who are travel ready with the necessary documents have come forward so far wanting to leave. Well, a bus crash in South Africa's northern province of Limpopo killed 45 people and left one seriously injured. The ministry there alleged that the driver lost control and collided with barriers on a bridge, causing the bus to topple over and hit the ground where it then caught fire. The passengers were pilgrims travelling from Botswana's capital, Gaborone, to an Easter service in the town of Maria. An eight-year-old girl survived and was taken to hospital with serious injuries. Didi India's Isaac Lukundo sent us this report from Tanzania. 
We know that uh, rescue operations uh, went on from late Thursday evening all the way into Friday morning. Uh, we know that it was a very difficult exercise because of the long drop that occurred after the accident. Uh, this particular accident happened on a bridge that was sort of turning or swerving. Uh, it was uh, in a mountainous pass. Uh, so the, when the accident happened, the bus dropped about 50 meters into a ravine. And so getting bodies out of the bus, which was mangled up and caught fire, uh, was very difficult or has been a difficult affair. Um, and uh, the authorities have reported to us that um, so far nine bodies are the ones that have been able to be identified, but the rest have not been able to be identified, which further complicates uh, the issue at this point. Well, that's it from me here in Washington. Back to you in the studio, Shabendi. Caroline, thanks. And Easter and Good Friday greetings to you and all our teammates in Washington, D.C. And still to come on DD India Global. We get you the latest from India's election season rush. Cherry Blossom begins blooming in Tokyo, Japan. Hong Kong passes a draconian national security law. Has democracy died in Hong Kong? Was there a secret weapon behind the mysterious Havana syndrome that shook American diplomacy? In the last decade was the hottest ever. Is our planet on the brink? Watch Connecting the Dots to get the full picture every Friday at 8 p.m. IST on DD India. Welcome back. You're watching DD India Global. I'm Shubhain Dughosh. Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates had a candid interaction with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi. Both the leaders had a freewheeling chat on a range of issues such as artificial intelligence, digital public infrastructure and climate change. They also talked about health, agriculture and education sectors in India. Gates presented books on nutrition to Prime Minister Modi. And Prime Minister, in turn, gifted him a vocal for local gift hamper. During the interaction, Prime Minister Modi told Gates about his concerns on tech misuse and deepfake. He said that there should be clear watermark on AI-generated content. अगर properly train किया बिना किसी के हाथ में दे दी जाए, तो वो misuse होने की संभावना ज्यादा है। अब मैंने AI से जुड़े सारे brain से उनसे भी बात की। मैंने कहा शुरू में हमने कोई भी AI generated चीज है, उस पर आना चाहिए watermark कि ये AI generated है, ताकि कोई misguide ना हो। और ये बुरी चीज नहीं है, simply it's a AI generated तो मैं उसका वैल्यू समझ लूँगा। डीप फेक भारत जैसे डेमोक्रेटिक कंट्रीज में और इतनी विशाल कंट्री में कोई एक डीप फेक में कुछ भी चीज डाल दे जैसे मेरे ही वॉइस में कुछ ऐसी गंदी चीज डाल दे तो शुरू में तो लोग मान जाएंगे तो बहुत बड़ी आग लग जाएगी तो ये जरूरी है कि डीप फेक आई ये आज शुरू के दिनों में आगे चल करके क्या होगा जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी शायद लेकिन ये हमने कुछ डूज एंड डोंट्स उस पर सीरियसली सोचना पड़ेगा एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी अर्ज द वर्ल्ड टू डेवलप द कांसेप्ट ऑफ ग्रीन जीडीपी ही सेड नेशन शुड इंक्लूड इट इन देयर ओवरऑल जीडीपी काउंट दुनिया को ग्रीन जीडीपी के कांसेप्ट को डेवलप करना चाहिए कि भाई तुम्हारे टोटल जीडीपी में ग्रीन जीडीपी कितनी है टोटल रोजगार में ग्रीन रोजगार कितने हैं हम एक नया आखिर टर्मिनोलॉजी बदलनी चाहिए दुनिया की तो मैं समझता हूं कि समस्या का समाधान हो सकता है लेकिन अगर मैं कहूंगा मैं तो जितना उपयोग करता हूं करूंगा मैं तो इतनी बिजली उपयोग करूंगा 
मैं इतना पानी बर्बाद करूंगा मैं ये करूंगा Let's get you the latest on what's happening in India in the run up to the world's largest democratic elections. First up Maharashtra political updates chief of Vanchit Bahujan Agari Prakash Ambedkar has given a call to go solo in these elections however MVA leader Sanjay Raut has said he is trying his best to convince Prakash Ambedkar so that MVA could fight elections unitedly in a mid looming deadlock over seat sharing leaders from Maharashtra's Mahavikas Agari are set to hold press conference on April 3rd big leaders including Sharad Pawar Uddhav Thakre Nana Patole and Bala Saheb Thorat will attend this conference where information regarding seats will be shared with the media. Another joint coordination meet of the Bharatiya Janata Party and Janata Dal Secular JDS leaders took place in Bengaluru. This in a bid to ensure that there is proper understanding between leaders and workers of both parties in the run up to the elections. This is the second joint meeting between the two coalition partners after the alliance was formed. as part of an alliance seat sharing formula jds will fight on 3 seats and the bjp on 25 mandya is a seat in southern karnataka which has become focus of attention it's going to be tough fight as hd kumaraswamy is contesting from mandya while congress has fielded star chandru moving on a tropical cyclone killed at least 18 people in the island of madagascar and displaced thousands more The country's disaster management office informed on Friday three others were injured four were still missing it added cyclone gamane made landfall in northeast madagascar damage to roads and bridges were also reported let's now turn to other stories making news around the world india's minister of external affairs s j shankar held talks with his ukrainian counterpart dmitry kuleba in new delhi on friday The discussions focused on ongoing Ukraine-Russia conflict and its wider ramifications. They also exchanged views on global and regional issues. More than 100 Nigerian students who were kidnapped were welcomed back home by their local community in northwestern state of Kaduna on Thursday. Nigerian army had rescued students and staff on Sunday. They were abducted by gunmen from school. in the country's north earlier this month former creative director of gucci alessandro michele is going to join italian luxury fashion house valentino michele made the announcement on social media platform instagram on thursday he will replace valentino's former creative director piera paolo bijoli who left the company on march 22 And Christians in the old city of Jerusalem held a procession on Good Friday, retracing the traditionally known route that Jesus took to his crucifixion. The devotees carried wooden crosses and sang hymns. With spring taking over in Japan, cherry blossoms have started blooming in Tokyo. Five days later than usual, the Met Agency announced the start of the cherry blossom season after it spotted 11 beautiful blossoms on the benchmark cherry tree at Yakokuni Shrine in Tokyo. That's all for this edition of DD India Global. Let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. You can connect with us on Facebook, X and Instagram. We'll be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. Have a great weekend. Our best wishes on Good Friday and Easter. I'm Shubhendu Ghosh from all of us here in Delhi. Thanks for watching DD India Global.